Welcome! In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to program and implement the dialog element. When the window appears over your content, the browser software automatically generates a backdrop pseudo element that you have the ability to design the properties and factors of. We'll add a darkening effect and a blur effect. So if you've ever seen an application or a page where something opens up, a window opens up, and then everything else on the page behind it blurs and becomes disabled. That's what you'll be learning how to do. First, we'll take a look at the finished product of what you'll be learning to create. So here you have your normal page content, and then the dialog box opens up, and everything that's behind it blurs and darkens a little bit, and you have control over the blur effect the darkening effect, and the browser automatically generates the backdrop pseudo element. Then when you close the modal dialog window, everything returns back to normal. While it's opened, everything is disabled and inert. All right, we're going to start out with the bare bonesies of a example.html file. That way, if you have an existing page or document, that you want to apply or implement this in, you can understand how to implement it into your existing document or page. But right now, if we take a look at this, very simple, you click open modal, nothing happens. And the only thing of note in here is this button with an ID of open modal BTN. And I'm still using the same code editor and IDE that I've been using for a while. It's called atom.io and it sunsetted a couple of years ago but I still enjoy it. It's still my favorite code editor. And I changed it from the tan light theme to a darker theme. So the first thing we'll do is apply the dialog element. And I'll have all of this code available at my website if you want to copy and paste it instead of trying to code along in the video. Now this dialog element won't show by default because it's a dialog element. And the thing of note inside of that is a button with an ID of close modal BTN. So if we take a look at this in the browser, refresh, we can't see the dialog element or any contents within it. Now we're going to apply the script element which this scripting can be externalized and you can source it to whatever, if you want to call it um, dialog.js, put it in a, a .js file, all of this code into a .js file, call it dialog.js, and then just say script source equals dialog.js. And you can clean up your document a little bit and get all this code out of it. And I'll be explaining every single line of this code, and it's all very, very simple. And there's not much of it, which is nice. So if we refresh our browser and click Open Modal, we now have the dialog box opens up. And then we can close it. But we don't get the blur effect or anything like that. And we'll be applying that through CSS. So let's go ahead up into our CSS section in our style element. We're going to apply some styles. Then let's refresh. Now when we click open modal, we have a little bit nicer looking box and it also blurs the content of your document and makes it inert. So it kind of just disables everything behind it, blurs it, that way the dialog box is the central focus temporarily. And I also added some optional code where you click outside of this box, it closes the box. And that doesn't happen by default. We just add a few lines of JavaScript to make that happen. And if you don't add that optional JavaScript, when you click outside the box, this dialog will remain visible and everything will remain inert behind it. Okay, now let's explain the code very quickly. So the first thing we do is create some variables, which are constants. 
for the modal, which is the dialog element right here. Dialog ID my modal document get element by ID my modal. This is the modal constant. Then we have the open button and close button. And for a lot of browsers, you don't have to use document get element by ID. So a lot of environments, you could just put my modal right here or right here. My modal, the ID of the element, my modal dot add event listener. And that will work in most browsers and environments. But just to be sure that you're getting all of the would be environments that somebody could be using, we still use document dot get element by ID even though it's not even necessary to use this method anymore, get element by ID in many of the different browser softwares, but we're still going to use it for the time being. So once we have an object set or variable set for modal, open button and close button, then we can then add click event listeners for all three of those items. So we have open button, add event listener, which is the click event. And when that click happens, we're going to run the show modal method for the dialog element. Now, this is a crucial step because this is what creates the backdrop pseudo element automatically in the browser software. Then for the close button, we just run the dot close method, which removes that pseudo element and returns restores the page back to normal. Now here's the optional code. This closes on the backdrop click. So if they click outside here, let's see, let's uh, remove this code very quickly. Refresh, open the dialog box. If I click outside of that box, nothing happens. The box remains until I press close modal. So with that optional code in place, we now have the feature of clicking outside of that box closes the box, which might be a feature that you want. So I'm going to leave that code in place. And how that works is on the click event of the modal, we refer to the event here in the parameters. Then we create a constant variable for the dialog dimensions, which is equal to modal dot get bounding client rectangle. Then we say if event dot client X event, meaning the click event dot client X is less than the dialog dimensions dot left or dialog dimensions dot right or dialog dimensions dot top or dialog dimensions dot bottom then we're going to close run the close method basically what that means is if anything outside of the dialog box is clicked then we close it now we'll quickly explain the css which there's not much to it we're just adding some styling for the body element some styling for the main content. Now here is the important part where you have your dialog backdrop pseudo element selector. And you can put the background color for the backdrop to be whatever you want. I just made it black with a 0 0.4 opacity. That way it's see-through, but it darkens the page a bit. And then we have the blur effect for the backdrop filter, we add a blur effect. And if I remove that, we can see what happens. We just, we get a darkening, but no blur, which that might be something you want, depending on your needs. But with the blur effect in place, it's a little bit nicer effect. And then we simply style the dialog box itself here with these properties. 
and then the elements that are within the dialog box are styled. The heading and the button. Now all of this code, the CSS and the JavaScript, can be externalized and your document can be a little bit slimmer and cleaner without all of the scripting and styling directly in your document. So as you can see, everything is super simple to understand, really easy to code, and so easy that even a baby could do it. Oh, and I just wanted to mention again real quick that all of this code will be available at my website. So if you go to adamcorey.com, it should be on the home page on the latest videos. You should see it. And if you can't find it there, you can search for the video and then get to the code that way.